My name is Antonio Valencia and I'm a cellist from Colombia. Um, I was browsing the catalog and uh, I think, you know, with around uh, 2,000 entries or so, it's definitely a great uh, source of information um, and of, of pieces and composers. Uh, you know, a lot of them I, I didn't know before. Um, so yeah i think it's a fantastic uh thing to have there uh and yeah it really it really um broadens your mind for sure just with the with the vast amount of information that is in there um with the you know also vast collection of pieces uh so yeah it's it's a fantastic catalog for sure because i'm from colombia um I've always felt this kind of responsibility uh, to incorporate Latin American music into my own repertoire. Um, I've played uh, many pieces up until now, the, the pieces that, I, that I've loved, and pieces that I keep on playing and I, and I keep uh, um, trying to program in concerts uh, all around wherever I go. Um, some of the ones I like to play the most would be uh, Hinastera's uh, Cello Concerto Number no. 2. I premiered it on 2016 here in Colombia um, and it was a great experience. I, I, I'm a bit of a quite a huge fan of, of Hinastera's music. Um, so I try to always, whenever I have the opportunity, I always try to program uh, this concerto because right? because I, I, I feel it's it's one piece that hasn't been played enough uh, or as much as it probably deserves um, and also you know with with more more of his cello repertoire of course the pompiana which would be probably the most famous uh, well-known work of his for for cello and piano uh, there's also the lesser known Puneña uh, which uh, I also keep in my repertoire um, just because it's it's just a an incredible piece. Uh, it's hard to explain the 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 amount of imagery that you get from playing the piece. Whether whether you know uh, you know which landscape it was inspired uh, on or not, you still, as an audience member, even without reading any program notes or anything, you you get this whole picture. Of, of all this nature and incredible stuff. Uh, so I love playing it. I think it's a whole experience uh, playing it and listening to it, for sure. Um, I also enjoy playing a lot the Lejanía Interior by Arturo Márquez. It was a piece that I got to know because it was a compulsory piece in the Carlos Prieto competition back in 2006. And uh, it's one of those pieces that you know, I learned because I had to learn it for the competition, but actually that I have kept in also my, my repertoire and that I even recorded in one of my CDs. Um, also beautiful music. Um, uh, I think more recently I've gotten a really cool, you know, set of opportunities to premiere uh, works by um, also living composers that, that also happen to be my friends. Uh, one of which is the Rhapsody de los Cuatro Elementos, written by Jorge Pinzon, uh, who is also who is a composer from Colombia, and who was also my theory teacher when I was very young. Um, it's a, it's a, it's such a great piece. It's it's so much fun to play. It's um, it's a small concerto for cello and string orchestra, and like the name says in Spanish, it's a rhapsody about all the four elements. So each movement is an element, uh, water, earth, fire, and wind. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, um, it's an incredible piece of music that I always also try to play as much as I can. Um, the latest one was uh, a cello concerto called String Master, written by Carlos Iscaray, who is also a, a friend of mine. Uh, He's a conductor from Venezuela, and he's now the principal conductor at Alabama Symphony. And um, the, con the concert was 
actually premiered in Alabama um, and it's um, it has tons of influences this piece is really great uh, I mean it has of course tons of Latin American music most uh, a lot of also Venezuelan uh, you know a lot of cuatro inspired stuff uh, but also it goes beyond the the, the our kind of territory uh, into uh, you know all these other different influences by Kodai, by Bach, by Villalobos also, um, and it's it's you can see why because the the composer is not on, not only a conductor but he was also a cellist so it's I think it's a fantastic piece um, and uh, we're also uh, making lots of efforts to to play it more and more. Um, because it, it's also a piece that really deserves to be played more and more. So I would say that those pieces are maybe the ones that are most um, present in my repertoire and the ones I like to play the most. So uh, probably the composers uh, that I've enjoyed working with the most would be the last two that I mentioned. Uh, which would be Jorge Pinzon and Carlos Iscaray, um, not only because they're great composers, uh, but also because uh, they gave me also a lot of freedom to maybe express what I thought could be uh, better for the cello part in the piece, uh, maybe do some suggestions, some tweaks to it. Uh, so it was always very interesting to see the how the piece evolves from the first draft up until the you know, the last draft that you're gonna play in concert. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the experience was just mainly super enjoyable because they're both my friends. Um, so yeah, it was it was a really, really great experience working with both of them. Okay, so I can't really speak about the whole Latin American system just because I, I'm, I haven't been a part of it really. And I also couldn't really say much about the one here in Colombia, uh, also because I wasn't really ever a part of any institution here. All my, you know, when when I started the cello, I was four and a half years old. I started with my mom, and then I had my first teacher when I was five, and I continued with him until I was twelve, and then I left the country. Um, so uh, also all the lessons with my first teacher were all private, so I I really didn't ever. Uh, I was never a part of an institution per se uh, but there have been tons of really great initiatives really great ideas and projects uh, like the Philharmonica Hall in Colombia uh, also all the youth orchestras that are part of the Philharmonica de Bogota and also the uh, Cartagena International Music Festival which uh, I'm a part of I have been a part of for I think at least maybe 10 or so years I've been going and uh, I started as a as a student with the scholarship there so I, I I first saw how it worked how everything worked from the point of view of a student you know you get tons of really great master classes and um, you get also the opportunity to, to watch amazing concerts with all the artists that, that, that they invite and for I think about six or so years I have been an artist now playing there and um, I think it's also a great great project great festival always bringing like world-class people to to play in Cartagena and not only to play but also to to teach and um, yeah I think they <clears throat> they really do a great job at bringing all these artists together every every year in Cartagena. All right, so probably the best uh, piece of advice that I could offer anyone wanting to pursue not just cello but uh, music in general um, will be to never lose that kind of inner drive that you have. Um, we all have goals and we all have dreams of where we want to be um, in the next. 5, 10, 15, 20 or so years um, and it doesn't matter how long-term or short-term your goals are just as long as you 
you're working towards something, I think that helps uh, keep this motivation alive. Um, also, it's important to know that whenever you reach a certain point of success in your career, whether whether that means that you won a big competition or you you are now part of you know you, you have a job in, in your dream orchestra or you have a very successful chamber group or you're already an international soloist playing all around the world um i think it's important to know that th it doesn't matter how successful you are you you should still be open to learn from other people and to keep yourself humble not let that uh, kind of success blind you because actually that's one of the nice things about our profession or you know quite beautiful things that we never really stop learning or, or 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 studying or i mean obviously practicing we never stop practicing but um so i think that's that's uh that's a very good thing to keep in mind to keep motivated to to be um ambitious uh, in 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 a, in a good way not not in a bad way uh and also be humble